Okay, let's start. So today uh, we will study the last part of this uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector, which is called the um, uh, diagonalization. So uh, in the previous chapter, uh, you guys remember that uh, we studied about the um, similarity transformation, right? What was the similarity transformation? So given the uh, matrix uh, A, and then uh, we multiply some matrix on the right, and then also this inverse on the left, right? And uh, for the matrix A and P, they are all diagonal, uh, uh, they are square matrix, and also this uh, matrix P should be invertible because uh, we need to multiply P inverse on the left, right? And then um, <coughs> the resulting matrix B will have the exact same characteristic polynomial, and thus uh, the entire set of the um, eigen eigenvalues will be exactly the same, right? So there was a story about this uh, similarity transformation. Okay, and so here in this uh, the, uh, chapter of the um, diagonalization, so we want to convert or transform the original matrix A by using this similarity transformation into a diagonal matrix. So, <clears throat> so given some matrix, uh, we can just uh, freely multiply some matrix like one, two, three, four on the left and it's inverse on the right, uh, sorry, uh, the, this matrix on the right and the inverse on the left, right? And the one, two, three, four, uh, and this two by two matrix is invertible, right? Because AD minus BC, which is the determinant is not zero, right? And so that is one particular similarity transformation of the original matrix A. But we want to find out some special matrix of P when uh, using it for the um, similarity transformation, and then it will make the resulting matrix of this similarity transformation into a diagonal matrix, okay? <coughs> okay, so given this example, it is a little bit kind of an opposite case, but uh, we can uh, understand this kind of situation uh, from this example. So given the matrix A, and so from here, you guys can see that uh, this can be easily converted into this form, A and P and P inverse, right? So given the uh, matrix A, if uh, we have this particular P, and then uh, if we multiply P on the right and uh, inverse on the left, and then it will give the resulting matrix as this uh, diagonal matrix. And so this is a um, uh, similarity transformation, right? And so <coughs> in this example, you guys know that the uh, similarity transformation preserves entirely the um, eigenvalues, right? And then it means that the eigenvalues of D will be the same as the eigenvalue of A, right? And then you guys also know that in the case of the um, diagonal matrix, it will just naturally, yeah, just directly reveal the um, eigenvalues. So what are the um, eigenvalues? It will be five and three, right? And so it means that the um, original matrix A, which is this uh, seven, two, and negative four and one, that uh, eigenvalues of this matrix will be exactly uh, five and three, right? So. Yeah, if you can find some matrix P such that the resulting similarity transformation result is this diagonal matrix, and then this diagonal matrix will just give you the um, uh, eigenvalues of the uh, original matrix, okay? And so, <coughs> this diagonal matrix is actually directly just telling you the um, eigenvalue of the original matrix, and then the question is, how can we find uh, such a matrix P? that will make the similarity transformation result as the um, diagonal matrix. And uh, interestingly, this matrix P will be composed of the um, eigenvectors. So more exactly, each column of your matrix P will be your eigenvectors. And what are their 
corresponding eigenvalues. So it is like this. So the first column of P will be, yeah, we'll have the um, eigenvalue of 5, and the second column will be your eigenvector, and uh, it's a, a, a corresponding eigenvalue will be 3, right? So, yeah, so that is kind of an interesting connection between this uh, similarity transformation through, yeah, I mean, for the diagonalizing the original matrix A and their relations to the um, eigenvalue and eigenvectors of the um, original matrix A, okay? <coughs> and uh, yeah, let's look at this example a little later and then just uh, Go directly to this theorem five. Yeah. So, given the um, uh, some square square matrix, uh, it is not always possible that you can transform your matrix A into the um, diagonal matrix. I mean, through the um, similarity transformation. So, some matrix is not diagonalizable, or is uh, it is not possible for some given matrix. To be to become a diagonal matrix a, uh, after this uh, similarity transformation, okay. But some matrix is possible to become a diagonal matrix after this uh, similarity transformation. Okay, and then what would be the um, exact condition for that? So, in general, if your matrix can become a diagonal matrix uh, uh, through this uh, similarity transformation, and then your matrix is called diagonalizable, okay? So your matrix can become a diagonal matrix and thus uh, through the um, similarity transformation. In other words, your matrix A is called the um, uh, diagonalizable matrix, okay? So if you cannot find any similarity transformation that will make your matrix into diagonal matrix, and then in, in that case, uh, your matrix is not diagonalizable, okay? And then when is your matrix A diagonalizable, okay? So in that case, the resulting matrix should be diagonal matrix, right? And so that's the definition of the being diagonalizable. And uh, uh, in that case, you should be able to find the matrix P, okay? That will uh, make the similarity uh, transformation result as the diagonal matrix. But this matrix P should be invertible, okay? Because uh, you need this uh, P inverse on the left, right? And so. Uh, you should be able to find the um, inverse matrix P. And uh, as I mentioned, yeah, although we haven't proved it yet, uh, we will see the proof uh, in, uh, very shortly, but uh, your matrix P is basically composed of eigenvectors for its columns. So as I mentioned, each of these columns in P are eigenvectors, okay? So your matrix A, uh, sorry, your matrix P is composed of the um, eigenvectors, and at the same time, that matrix should be invertible because we need P inverse to, to define this similarity transformation. And thus, the collection of eigenvectors as a column of a particular matrix. And uh, that matrix is invertible. And what does that mean? In that case, you should be able to find n linearly independent eigenvectors. So that's when the matrix, uh, which is a collection of eigenvectors, is invertible, right? So <coughs> when is your matrix diagonalizable? This is when you can find n linearly independent eigenvectors, right? And then uh, if you guys remember what we studied the last time, and then when do we have n linearly independent eigenvectors? So that's when we achieve uh, yeah, max, yeah, all the maximum possible number of geometric multiplicity as the um, algebraic multiplicity, right? So that's when we can find n linearly independent eigenvectors, right? So that is actually the yeah, necessary and the, I mean, the exact same condition uh, to satisfy the, that the fact that your matrix A is diagonalizable, okay? So, yeah, diagonalizable is equivalent to having uh, n linearly independent eigenvectors, okay? Okay, so that is kind of uh, one of the main conclusions that we will have. And uh, let's see why this matrix P should be composed of 
eigenvectors that you have. Okay. <clears throat> so let's look at this theorem. So it is saying that uh, this is square matrix A is diagonalizable uh, if and the only if matrix A has n linearly independent eigenvectors, right? So this is the exact same thing that I just mentioned, right? And in fact, yeah, so your matrix A can be decomposed into this form. So as I mentioned, uh, your matrix A uh, will be converted into diagonal matrix through this similarity transformation. And then this guy is actually the same as this form, right? So in this case, you should be able to find uh, matrix D and also the invertible P, right? And in that case, as I mentioned, this D will be composed, I mean, the diagonal entries of this matrix D will be eigenvalues of the original matrix A. And then the columns of P will be I the corresponding eigen uh, vectors, right? So let's, uh, yeah, let's prove that. So let's see. So from this equation or this equation, we will change it into this form. AP equals PD, right? So if uh, either this or this equation is true and then it can be easily converted into this form by just multiplying p on the left right and then p and the p inverse will be cancelled out here right and so i'm just talking about this situation here so i'm uh, multiplying p on the left and the p on the left here so we will obtain ap equals pd right okay and then how can we understand this equation so let's just evaluate this uh, AP and PD separately and then see uh, how they are related with each other. Okay, so this, uh, yeah, let's first look at this AP. So uh, let's just uh, denote the column of matrix P as V1 through Vn. So P should be some square matrix, right? And then Let's call the columns of this P as V1 through Vn, okay? And then AP, uh, the multiplication between the, these two can be represented as this A times this matrix because uh, simply P will have these columns, right? And then from this, uh, this multiplication of these two matrix, we can uh, represent it into this form. Um, yeah, in this case, yeah, uh, we already studied it uh, maybe in the in chapter two or so, and so here, so A, the matrix A on the left will provide the basis vectors that will be used for the linear combination, right? So columns of the left matrix will just provide the vectors that will be used for the um, linear combination, and then this uh, first column of the right matrix will provide the coefficient. Right, to form the first column vector in the resulting matrix, right? And so A times V1, which work as the linear combination, yeah, which works as a linear combination coefficient, and then the resulting matrix, uh, resulting vector will be uh, represented as A times V1. And then what about the second column? It will be using the same mm, ingredient columns provided in the left matrix A. And then another, uh, linear combination coefficient provided by V2. And thus, uh, the second column in the resulting matrix can be represented as A times V2, right? Okay, so we already studied that probably. And thus, the resulting matrix can be represented in this form. So A, which is the common matrix times V1, uh, that will form the first column, and uh, with the V2, that will form the second column and so on. Okay, so this is, the f uh, this is uh, how this AP look looks like. And then let's just move on to this A, PD. So <clears throat> in this case, P will have yeah, these columns. So let's just uh, think of the simple case of having the three columns of V1 and V2 and V3. And then this matrix D, so by definition of this uh, diagonalized, diagonalization, 
this matrix D should be, of course, diagonal matrix. And then in that case, the matrix will be three by three. And then let's just call the um, diagonal, uh, uh, the end diagonal entries of this diagonal matrix as lambda one, lambda two, and lambda three. Okay. Okay. So in this case, yeah. So we just apply the same you know, column combination perspective on this uh, matrix matrix multiplication, and then we have th these three uh, ingredient column vectors on the left matrix, and then what about the um, the linear combination coefficient provided on the first column? It would be lambda zero and uh, lambda one and zero and zero, right? So it will just use only the um, v one. And uh, we will scale it with uh, this uh, scaling factor of lambda 1, right? And so the first column will be just v v1 times this lambda 1, right? And then what about the um, second column? Second column will be formed by using this uh, linear combination coefficient. And thus, it will just uh, pick up the second column only and with the scaling factor of uh, lambda 2, right? And so lambda 2 times v2, right? So... <coughs> When multiplying some matrix with the diagonal matrix on the right, so it will just scale each column by this uh, scaling factor of lambda 1, lambda 2, and lambda 3, right? And thus the resulting matrix uh, will be this one, right? Okay, and then yeah, we are almost uh, yeah, reaching the um, final point of our proof. So this AP should be equal to PD. So this equation uh, came from just by multiplying this original diagonal kind of, uh, yeah, diagonal kind of thing. Uh, yeah, by multiplying it uh, with the P on the left. And so this is the, the result that we want to compare. And so uh, these two matrix should be the same. And that means <coughs> this first column should be the same as this first column, right? And then the second column should be the same as the second column, right? And thus, what do we get? What do we get? So we will obtain this thing. A V1 should be the same as uh, lambda 1 V1, right? Which is this guy, okay? So this is just a columnized equation. So this guy should be the same as this guy, and thus we obtain this. And suddenly, we obtain the equation that we need to satisfy the, um, uh, for the um, uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector, right? So that way, so what was these? Uh, what were these uh, vectors of v1 through vn? Okay. So we just uh, simply defined or denoted them as the columns of matrix P, right? We didn't, yeah, we didn't impose any assumption about the matrix P. But in order to satisfy this equation of AP being equal to PD, yeah, that will give yeah, this uh, columnized equation that is the same, just the same as eigenvalue and eigenvector equation, right? Okay, so in conclusion, your matrix, uh, your vector V1 and V2 and so on, these uh, vectors should be eigenvectors, right? And then also, yeah, not surprisingly, the corresponding lambda 1, lambda 2, and those values will be the corresponding eigenvalues, right? And so, <coughs> in conclusion, in order to satisfy this uh, AP equals PD, P should be composed of like eigenvectors uh, for its columns, and D should contain the um, diagonal entries as uh, corresponding eigenvalues. So that is our conclusion. And uh, yeah, one thing that yeah we need to discuss a little bit further is that so we understood these kind of relationship based on this equation of AP equals PD right but in this case it doesn't require your matrix P to be invertible right so in other words suppose we start from this equation of AP being equal to PD and then can we go back to this equation of P inverse A times P equals D, right? Can we go back to that original equation? I mean, we can, 
yeah we can reach this equation starting from the um, upper equation but if we start from the uh, lower equation and then if we want to go to the um, upper equation we need actually some additional assumption that this matrix P should be invertible right so in other words in the lower equation even if your matrix P is not invertible you can just uh, satisfy that right and uh, how now how can we satisfy that equation of AP equals PD so that is uh, related to this kind of uh, condition or requirement that like diagonal diagonalized uh, sub matrix uh, requires n linearly independent eigen vectors right and uh, yeah so let's think about the opposite case where we have maybe less than n linearly independent eigen vectors so for example in the case of this a uh, 3 by 3 matrix suppose you you can find only two linearly independent eigen vectors right and then in that case okay Yeah, so we are looking at this equation, AP equals PD, and then uh, your matrix A is 3 by 3 matrix, and then at least you know that the uh, columns of P should be eigenvector, and uh, the corresponding I, uh, diagonal entry of D should be eigenvalue. And so, uh, suppose you have only two eigenvectors, and then you can just form this uh, P as having only the um, two columns. Okay, so this is your matrix. Okay, and then um, this P will be also placed here. So this is a uh, same matrix of P. And then what about D? So D can be represented as just two by two matrix. So again, you have two linearly independent eigenvectors and then you can think of their associated eigenvalues. Okay. And in that case, let's call it as lambda one and lambda two. Okay. So in this case, yeah, so if we call it as a lambda v1 and v2, still in this equation, let's call it as a, and then still it is like a v1, yeah, a v2. So this is the resulting matrix on the left. Uh, and then it will be like, yeah, this one is v1 and v2. And so uh, lambda1, v1, and lambda2, v2, right? And so you still obtain a v1 should be equal to lambda1 v1 and a v2 should be equal to lambda 2 v2 right and so still you obtain this uh, eigenvalue vector equation so even in this case where uh, you have uh, less than n number of linearly independent eigenvectors you can still form this uh, ap equals pd okay but in this case <clears throat> we cannot go back to this equation of ap and the p inverse equals d and yeah why yeah why can we not go back to this equation it is simply because this matrix p is not even a square matrix right so p is just a three by two matrix right and so <clears throat> p is not even a square matrix because we only collected uh, linearly independent eigenvectors and we have strictly less than n linearly independent eigenvectors or we have only two eigenvectors in the three-dimensional space right and thus we cannot form like square matrix by using the line linearly independent eigenvectors right and thus this matrix is not invertible right and so we cannot find this uh, p inverse and thus we cannot find uh, yeah the similarity transformation like this that will make the matrix uh, the result matrix is the diagonal matrix, right? So that's when uh, your matrix is not diagonalizable. <coughs> okay, uh, any questions? Okay. Okay, and then uh, let's just uh, do some exercise of making a given matrix into a diagonal matrix. Okay, so typically the question will be like this. So uh, you are given a matrix A, 
And then uh, the question will be to ask you to determine whether your matrix A is diagonalizable or not, and uh, if your matrix is diagonalizable, and diagonalize your matrix. Okay. So, yep. So diagonalize the following matrix if possible. Okay. Okay. So in this example, so the process will be exactly the same as finding the um, uh, eigenvalue and eigenvector, and then just to simply form the collection of the eigenvectors as P, and then the uh, resulting diagonal matrix as just having the um, eigenvalues on the diagonal matrix. <coughs> okay, so we want to find the uh, first eigenvalues, uh, and so in order to do that, we need to form this uh, characteristic polynomial or characteristic equation and uh, make it into zero. And then uh, we find the solution that satisfies this equation, and then, yeah. Yeah, so uh, for each of these uh, lambda values or eigenvalues, and then uh, we will find the um, eigenvectors, and we just collect those eigenvectors, right? Okay, and uh, if you can find, yeah, so you can find the maximum possible number of uh, uh, linearly independent eigenvectors from each of your eigenvalues, right? So that's when you have uh, your matrix is diagonal, diagonalizable, right? So in this case, so lambda is uh, lambda has uh, the solution of one and negative two, and uh, their algebraic multiplicity is one and two, right? Because this uh, lambda plus two uh, is squared, right? And so uh, when having this uh, lambda as one, and then you should be able to find at least yeah one uh, basis vector for your eigenspace, for the null space of a minus lambda i, yeah, x equals zero, right? And then uh, for this eigenvalue of negative two, um, <coughs> sometimes uh, you may be able to find only one, yeah, basis vector for the null space, and uh, sometimes you can find two, right? So it's really dependent on your matrix. But uh, in this case, if you can find the two uh, linearly independent eigenvectors or two basis vectors okay, for that null space, and then uh, that's when you achieve the maximum possible number of this uh, geometric multiplicity as the algebraic multiplicity. And so that's when uh, your matrix A is uh, diagonalizable. Okay. <coughs> okay, then yeah, fortunately in this case uh, we can find uh, two linearly independent eigenvectors uh, from this eigenvalue of my negative 2 and thus your matrix A is diagonalizable and what about the matrix P? So P will be just a collection of these eigenvectors, right? And then what about D? D is just also a collection of the corresponding Eigen uh, values, right? And then uh, you can verify whether uh, this matrix uh, P is invertible or not by doing the um, row reduction. And also, you can also verify if this matrix P is really making your matrix A into a diagonal matrix by using this uh, similarity transform. Okay? So you can verify that by using maybe AP equals, yeah. PD. I mean, checking whether that is true or not. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a how to yeah, how to uh, diagonalize your matrix. Yeah, uh, in case your matrix A is diagonalized. Okay, so um, yeah, let me make a, another note about it. So, in this case, what if we form the matrix P by reordering? these columns differently. So let's say, yeah, let's just interchange it. Let's just interchange the first and the second column in this matrix P. And then also this diagonal matrix D, let's just change these two elements between one and negative two, right? So in that case, are these also a valid P and D? Which means uh, your, yeah, this equation is the same as D. So are these a valid P and D or not? 
So in other words, do we need to form matrix P and D by using this specific or particular order? Or is it okay to freely change their order? Yeah, also we need to, yeah, in that case we also need to change the, um, the order of these uh, diagonal entries of matrix D. So is it possible or is it okay or not? So it's uh, completely okay to yeah to change the um, orders of these eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, uh, corresponding eigenvalues. Okay. <coughs> yeah. So uh, we can understand uh, we can understand this because. Yeah, so it is basically just to convert it into AP equals PD, right? And then uh, P, as long as P is uh, invariable or having any nearly independent eigenvectors, and then we can go always go back, come back to this equation that we want to satisfy, right? And then uh, AP equals PD, I mean, if we break down into a column level, I mean, if we just uh, equate them, uh, column-wise, and then, yeah, so as I, yeah, as we saw, yeah, we only need to satisfy that equation. So that uh, that column-wise equations are just the uh, same as this AP equals PD, right? So, yeah, so it's uh, completely okay to just uh, satisfy this uh, column-wise equation. And thus, yeah, if we change the order of this uh, columns of P, and then, yeah, we can just uh, change the eigenvalues or diagonal entries of D, right? So that will give uh, exact same set of these columnized equations. <coughs> so yeah, <coughs> yeah. Some possible scenario would be like uh, so. Uh, suppose you took the final exam and then uh, yeah, you are very happy uh, to to have the break, but uh, yeah. Uh, after you saw the um, uh, answer sheet of the um, final exam, and then uh, you found that uh, yeah, you uh, yeah, you gave or you made uh, your matrix P and the D with the different column orders as the yeah, from the the answer. Okay, so that would be okay. Yeah, that will give a perfect credit or perfect score. <coughs> okay, and then uh, let's move on to this uh, next theorem. This theorem six. <clears throat> yeah, let's think of this a uh, special situation where you have n distinct eigenvalues, n distinct eigenvalues. So, how can we understand this this situation? So, let's look at this example. <coughs> where is it? Okay, so. If you have n, n distinct eigenvalues, and what does that mean? So the meaning of that is when forming this uh, uh, characteristic equations, and then each of your solution of this equation will have one as an algebraic multiplicity. So your algebraic multiplicity for each of your eigenvalue will always be one. So that's the situation where you have n Eigen, uh, n distinct eigenvalues, right? So in that case, <coughs> your algebraic multiplicity is one for each of eigenvalues, right? And then, <coughs> what about the um, uh, geometric multiplicity? So geometric multiplicity should be at least yeah greater than or equal to one. So that <coughs> means we yeah it is always true that we can find at least one. Yeah, non-zero basis vector for the um, eigenspace corresponding to each of eigenvalues, right? And then, yeah, so yeah, that number should be at least one, and that is already the maximum number, maximum number that you can achieve because your algebraic multiplicity is one, so that is the maximum number, right? But uh, yeah, you are guaranteed to find at least one um, as the um, geometric multiplicity. So that number 
is just already achieving the maximum possible number. And so, in the, uh, that case, uh, your matrix A is diagonalizable. And uh, in other words, in that case, you can find n linearly independent eigenvectors. Okay? <clears throat> and also, you can also understand um, the reason for this uh, to be true is bec uh, because, yeah, so we have n distinct eigenvalues. And then if we pick up eigenvectors from each of these different eigenspace, and then because these eigenvalues are all distinct or are, are all different from each other, and thus the corresponding eigen, uh, the, the collection of the um, corresponding eigenvectors will all be linearly independent. So that is the theorem that we studied in. <coughs> yeah, in chapter uh, 5.1 about this theorem, right? So we kind of spent some time yeah, on proving that theorem, right? So, yeah, so in this case, this number R, right? So instead of R distinct eigenvalues, if we have N distinct eigenvalues, right? And then, yeah, that means, yeah, uh, according to this theorem, uh, it means that we can find N linearly independent eigenvectors, and that will form your invertible matrix P, right? <coughs> Okay, but uh, yeah, that is kind of a sufficient condition for uh, to be uh, to be a diagonal matrix. So yeah, even when your matrix A doesn't have n linear, uh, uh, yeah, n distinct eigenvalues. So given like a three by three matrix, so you have only like two distinct eigenvalues, just like this case. So in that case, you still have hope, right? So your matrix. It's still possible to be diagonalizable, but sometimes it may not, right? So this guy is a prom problematic one, right? So depending on whether this guy ha gives uh, two linearly independent eigenvectors or only one eigenvectors, okay? So that determines whether your matrix A is diagonalizable or not. <coughs> Okay, and then this uh, theorem seven is the last part of this uh, big eigenvector and eigenvalue chapter, but uh, this is uh, what we already studied. Okay, suppose your matrix A, which is the square matrix, has this P distinct eigenvalues, and of course this P is less than or equal to N right and why is it why is it so so we think of uh, distinct the number of distinct eigenvalues as p and that is always less than or equal to n and this p is basically i mean that is the number of an eigenvalues and that no eigenvalues should be the solution of your characteristic polynomial or characteristic equation, right? And your characteristic equation will always have the um, degree of n, right? So the um, equation with the degree of an n uh, will have the maximum number of solution as n, right? So if we have a three by three matrix, and then the characteristic polynomial will have the degree of three, and thus <coughs> you can maximally have uh, three different yeah, solutions. Okay, and then, yeah, so in this case, we only think of this, uh, yeah, the distinct number, yeah, distinct eigenvalues, I mean, P number of distinct eigenvalues, and then, yeah, for each of these distinct eigenvalues, if you can find, yeah, I mean, the, this, uh, G, yeah, dimension of eigenspace, which is called the um, uh, geometric multiplicity, right? And then number is less than or equal to the um, uh, algebraic multiplicity. So this is already, yeah, what we already studied. <clears throat> and then, uh, uh, if your matrix A is diagonalizable, if and only if, uh, when you achieve this um, yeah, maximum number of yeah, maximum geometric multiplicity, okay. 
then here so in case you have yeah you have some question about these uh, specific uh, statements <coughs> so if uh, your matrix A is diagonalizable it's a necess <coughs> necessary and sufficient condition is that yeah the first condition that you need to satisfy is the characteristic polynomial factors completely into a linear factors <coughs> so what does that mean so what does that mean <coughs> so uh, have you guys uh, studied uh, about the possible form of the um, this uh, factors I mean the product of these fact <coughs> the factors for some polynomial equations <coughs> so suppose you have maybe fourth order polynomial like ax the power of four and uh, so let's see yeah let's imagine this uh, fourth order pol uh, equation okay polynomial <coughs> equation and in that case if you imagine it's a uh, factor the form factor the form factor Vectorization. Okay, so if you perform the vectorization on it uh, to reveal the solution of this equation, and then, yeah, so it will be like, yeah, maybe we will have an x a here, and then a, yeah, minus uh, x minus x minus alpha one, and x minus alpha two, and so on, right? So if you obtain this factorization and then it is called a completely composed of a linear factors okay but <clears throat> sometimes uh, it may not always be possible to obtain this uh, linear form of this uh, factorization <clears throat> and so <clears throat> this is a yeah this actually assumes that our solution for these uh, alpha 1 and alpha 2 are just limited to be a real number okay so the real number so we only consider the real number okay so in that case you guys know that if you have n real number of solutions I mean n number of real solutions and then that's when you can factorize your uh, polynomial equations into this uh, yeah, linear factorization but yeah in that case yeah, for the um, fourth order uh, polynomial equations and then sometimes you have two real solutions real value <coughs> solution and two imaginary <coughs> solution right so let me give an example <coughs> just like this right so in that case you have two real valued solution of one and two or maybe you can even think of maybe x minus 1 plus square root 3 and x minus 1 minus square root 3 and then x2 like this okay so in this case we have two real valued solutions right so still uh, 1 plus uh, <coughs> square root 3 and the 1 minus square root 3 are still the real valued solution okay and then uh, this part okay so the reason that we cannot factorize this further into a linear form is because yeah from there we cannot factorize them by using a <coughs> real value solution we need kind of an imaginary kind of number or complex numbers right so <coughs> in this case this is when uh, you have like yeah strictly uh, less than n number of uh, real value solution so suppose you have yeah you are uh, considering like a <coughs> 4 by 4 matrix and then your characteristic equation will be just a fourth order polynomial equation and then if you imagine it's uh, this uh, factorized form and then 
Suppose you have this kind of form, I mean by just assuming the real value solutions, and then, uh, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so yeah, in this case, it means that we have only two real value solutions, right, which is strictly less than four. So in that case, I mean, throughout our entire course, uh, we don't consider any complex numbers. So in that case, it means that we only, f yeah, we can find only two eigenvalues, not four. Right? I mean, con yeah, counting their multiplicities, right? So in that case, yeah, even before we check, I mean, even before we compute their associated eigenvectors, so if you see your uh, characteristic equation is factorized like that, and then, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, you can just uh, safely stop there and then just answer, I mean, write your answer as like, uh, your matrix A is not diagonalizable. <coughs> so in that case, yeah, the maximum number of uh, linearly independent eigenvectors will be just two because those eigenvectors uh, should always come from only the um, real valued eigenvalues, right? So that's the meaning of this. So yeah, considering all the real valued numbers, your characteristic polynomial should factor into yeah only these linear factors, not these uh, quadratic factors that will imply, I mean, that will include the um, complex solutions, okay? So in other words, the necessary condition to be diagonalized is that you, yeah, you need to find n real value solution for your characteristic equation or, yeah, for your eigenvalues. You need to find, you need to be able to find n, yeah, number of Eigenvalues. I mean, counting the um, counting their mo uh, ge uh, algebraic multiplicity, right? So I'm talking about like uh, <coughs> in this example. So if you found this uh, two distinct eigenvalues, but if we count their algebraic multiplicities, and then uh, you can say that in this case you found three uh, eigenvalues, right? Just uh, counting these uh, redundancies or uh, geometric uh, sorry uh, algebraic multiplicities. <coughs> Any questions? So yeah, so that is the that is about this part. And then the rest of them, yeah, you can easily understand that. And then about this uh, C. Okay, and C is nothing, yeah, nothing new, and uh, it's uh, quite easy to understand. Okay, so your matrix A is diagonalizable, and then yeah, so again, our conclusion is that you can find. Yeah, in that case, you can find n linearly independent eigen vectors, right? And then it means that just consider this entire space of an R n, right? So, for example, in the case of three-dimensional space of R three, which is the entire like three-dimensional space, and then what is the? <coughs> so let's just view it as a particular subspace, and then we should be able to find its a basis vectors. And then, uh, yeah, what is the simplest possible basis vectors? It will be just the standard one of 1, 0, 0, and 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, right? But we can also find another set of basis vectors that will yeah, span the exact same subspace and also being uh, linearly independent by its uh, definition of a basis, right? So in that case, because, yeah, I mean, uh, because we can, yeah, because we found the um, n linearly independent eigenvectors, or in other words, in the um, three-dimensional entire space, and uh, you can find uh, three linearly independent eigenvectors, and then those three linearly independent eigenvectors will actually work as, yeah, another basis vectors that will span this entire R3, right? So that means if you think of this a change of coordinate thing, right? Given a sum vector, you can actually uh, find the new representation based on the new kind of coordinate system or based on the new basis that we found, yeah, as this eigenvectors, okay? <coughs> so let's view that. Let's look at that example. So just before uh, our class, I just uh, uploaded another, yeah, I mean, additional class material or slides. So let's look at that. Slides. Uh, okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> okay, so, so far uh, we understood or studied the diagonalizable matrix and uh, this uh, di uh, your matrix A being diagonalizable is equivalent to say to saying that your matrix A has yeah, having this uh, eigen decomposition eigen decomposition so what is this eigen decomposition <laughs> yeah, so it is just a new representation I mean yeah this is the, the equation that we already studied so we know this is a diagonalizable equation and then if we represent it as this form a being equal to p times d times p inverse and then this can be viewed as particular factorization of your matrix A right so given a matrix A okay a is represented as the product of these three parts, I mean three matrices, right? Where the matrix in the middle, this B is diagonal, diagonal matrix, and then uh, the right and the left matrix is also a square matrix, and uh, they, uh, yeah, they are invariable matrix, uh, right? So in that case, we can view it as the factorization of matrix A or decomposition of the original matrix A into like three different uh, three different pieces right so that way uh, it is yeah called the um, eigen decomposition okay so if your matrix a is diagonalizable and then it is exactly the same as your matrix a has eigen decomposition but this eigen decomposition yeah i mean it's not it's not possible to obtain or decompose your matrix a into this uh, eigen decomposition right because your matrix A should be diagonalizable, and that's when you can obtain this eigen decomposition. So some matrix, yeah, will not have this eigen decomposition, right? So if you imagine like uh, another factorization that we studied, which is LU factorization. So sometimes some matrix may not have an LU factorization, right? Because I mean, you, if your matrix A requires some row interchanges, and then yeah, that actually messes up this uh, L, yeah, forming this L and U, right? So <coughs> some, sp uh, some special or some particular matrix will have LU factorization, and sometimes some matrix doesn't. So it's the same as, yeah, uh, this situation. Okay, and then uh, <coughs> by looking at this uh, form of this eigen decomposition, and then also uh, the, the changing the coordinate system or the changing the basis uh, that I just uh, mentioned maybe five minutes ago. Let's uh, view this thing uh, in more little, uh, in a little bit more detail. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, given your matrix A, uh, suppose this matrix is diagonalizable or having an eigen decomposition, and then let's imagine or consider this uh, matrix transformation defined by this uh, A times X, okay? So we now consider this uh, linear transformation defined by the standard matrix A, where this A is diagonalizable, or A having eigen decomposition. Okay, and then uh, this uh, single transformation can actually be uh, represented as this form, and then can be represented in this form, which means your matrix, uh, your input vector X is actually going through three different linear transformation defined by the matrix of P inverse and D and P. Okay, so you can view this a single matrix transformation into these uh, three, yeah, subsequent, like, uh, yeah, three consecutive uh, linear transformation. And then uh, let's just uh, study or examine each of these uh, linear transformation defined by first P inverse and D and P. Okay, so what is this uh, P inverse of an X? So let's focus on this. Okay, so <clears throat> let's look at this particular example where your matrix A is just two by two matrix. Okay, two by two matrix, and then uh, your matrix A has this these two eigenvalue and vector equation. Okay, so and also V1 is actually 3 comma 1, 3 comma 1, and V2 is yeah, negative 2 comma 1, okay? Okay, and then yeah, each of these eigenvectors are satisfying these two, and then 
what is this uh, p inverse x okay so let's define the output vector as y and then uh, we can simply write it as this guy p times y equals x right so so here what is given and what is not so our input vector x is given right and that input vector yeah given this matrix a of 2 by 2 our input vector will also be 2 by uh, i mean 2 dimensional vector Right? So input vector is just a two-dimensional vector. And suppose that input vector is 4, 3. Okay. <coughs> okay. In this uh, 4, 3, this vector is given here. So 4, 3. And then P times Y uh, should be equal to this uh, 4, 3. And then this uh, uh, output vector Y, uh, we need to obtain this uh, output vector y because we want to obtain the resulting vector in this place right and so yeah that means we need to solve this linear system right so yeah it's just like ax equals b b is given as this x which is already given vector and p is y p is composed of eigenvectors right so i mean the columns of p will be eigenvectors right and then you guys know that this guy the solution for this guy or this a solution for this a times x equals b is basically finding out some linear combination coefficient of an x i mean when using the columns of an a and then we need to find the, the specific uh, linear combination of these columns so that the resulting linear combination to be the same as b right so yeah and that is actually yeah so this is b or this is a given vector x and then what is the columns of matrix a or p so this is v1 and this is v2 and then we need to form the um, this parallelogram right to make this vertex as the given <coughs> vector and so what is the scaling factor it will be like 2 and it will be like 1 so that y vector will be 2 comma 1 right <coughs> and then also it can also be viewed as the change of this uh, coordinate system so why this point yeah why is this point having the coordinate of 4 comma 3 it is because we are using the standard basis vector which means Okay, which means from here our standard basis vector is this guy this guy and this guy 1 comma 0 and 0 comma I mean it sounds too obvious but uh, let's just uh, try to understand it more rigorously based on like a basis vector and their linear combination to represent a given point right and then given these two basis vectors and then this guy will have yeah this kind of a, a parallelogram which is actually a square uh, Rectang rectangle and then what is the, the the scaling factor it will be four times the first basis vector and then three times the second basis vector right so that's why we obtain this uh, four times three right and then now for a given uh, given same subspace which is our entire two-dimensional space we now using we not we are now using these two new basis vector and then what is the coordinate of this guy right so that is like uh, 2 comma 1 right so that 2 comma 1 is basically yeah just be the solution from this equation <coughs> okay and then in other words your uh, input vector x which is 4 comma 1 can be represented as a linear combination of these eigenvectors using these linear combination coefficient of 2 comma 1 okay Okay, then uh, now let's look at the second transformation defined by D. So what is D? So D is eigen, I mean the, um, the uh, D has the um, uh, eigenvalues on the um, diagonal entries, right? So <clears throat> because P uh, has this, uh, these two eigenvectors of this particular order of V1 and V2, and thus 
our D should have these corresponding eigen val uh, values like this, right? Okay, so this is our D. And then, given this D, we need to multiply this Y. Okay, Y. So what is Y? Y was the linear combination coefficient to represent the given input point with respect to the new basis, which is which are our eigen vectors. Okay, and then <clears throat> from here, the, the multiplication with the diagonal matrix is actually really simple. So in this case, the typical way of multiplying this matrix vector multiplication is that this guy times this, right? And also this guy times this, right? But if your matrix A is diagonal matrix, and then that multiplication can be really computed simply by just <coughs> multiplying this guy with this and this guy with this. So that means, so typically like one, two, three, four, and maybe five, six, and then typically each of these uh, values in the resulting vector will be, yeah, will actually mix up or combine those two elements by using this linear combination coefficients, right? But when your matrix A is diagonal one, and then you don't mix up these two input elements, right? And then you just, just scale each element separately by using these diagonal entries. So it's like two, one, and times negative one and uh, two. So that is like a separate or respective scaling factor. <coughs> okay, and then uh, let's, yeah, let me give a kind of high level kind of understanding about like multiplying this D, okay? So that D is actually like this. So if your vector X, and then if you want to compute this uh, A times X, and then, yeah, the reason yeah, the reason, uh, I mean, reason for like representing the input vector X in terms of the um, linear combination of eigenvectors is because we want it to like A times, yeah, X is like a two V1 and one times V2, right? So that is coming from here. And then, yeah, A times V1 and A times V2 can be, yeah, converted into just a scalar multiple of the um, input vector because V1 and V2 are eigenvectors, right? So that's why we need to, or yeah, that's the reason why we need, yeah, we represent the um, input vector as the linear combination of eigenvectors. Okay, and then this guy, like two times AV1, so let me just use to here, two times V1 and plus one times V2, so that was the linear combination representation of the um, input vector, and then Let's just uh, distribute it. Two times A times B1 and one times A times B2. And then this guy can be converted into lambda one times B1. And what was the lambda one? Lambda one was minus one or negative one. And so this negative one times B1 and plus, yeah. The V2 had the eigenvalue of two, right? And so it's like uh, one times two times B2, right? <coughs> Okay, so from here, so let's just bring here, bring two here. And so those two numbers are what? Those two are the linear combination coefficient to represent the um, input vector in terms of the um, eigenvectors, right? As, uh, as their linear combinations. And then what are these numbers? Those numbers are the um, multiplier or these are eigenvalues, right? And then those two numbers are multiplied, right? Because, yeah, yeah. Originally, your input vector x had the component of this v1 as this uh, scaling vector, and that scaling vector will be further multiplied with its corresponding eigenvalues, right? And what is this number? Two times negative one. That is actually this number, and that is done in this diagonal matrix multiplication on the left, right? Okay, so, so far, 
yeah, you understood up to this point. <coughs> and then from this, uh, yeah, uh, three consecutive uh, linear transformation perspective, we need, yeah, we need one more transformation of this P, right? This P. <coughs> so we obtained so far, this is uh, d times y, right? d times y is this guy, right? And then we now further multiply it with this p, right? So what is p? So p is this guy, v1 and v2, right? And then those z1 and z2 are these two numbers, right? And those numbers are this uh, more product of this uh, pink and the green points, I mean green values. And then, what about them? So they are just linearly combining these original, I mean, the basis vector that we used to represent or to obtain the new coordinate, right? So again, what are these numbers? Or what are these uh, 2, comma 1? So they were these 2, 2, comma 1. And those two numbers can be viewed as the, the coordinate values when using the basis as this guy, v1 and v2, right? So it's like, yeah, you can think of the situation as like, so we change it first. We, yeah, we, yeah, first step was to change the coordinate system from this original standard basis into the um, eigenvector basis, right? And then you find the, the corresponding coordinates, okay? So that way, this uh, 4, 3 is actually converted into 2, 1. And then you just uh, uh, multiply the diagonal matrix D, or it can be viewed as just a yeah, respective scaling of each, uh, each component, because A times V1 will be just a changing into like a lambda 1 times V1, right? So that way, you are doing like a separate kind of scaling or respective scaling on each element. And that is actually the same as like this, yeah, uh, pictorially, like uh, we have this uh, V1, and then, so this is the, yeah, these two linear combination, and then this 2V1 uh, will be further multiplied by its uh, eigenvalue, and thus it will be like this guy, right? And then again, because this is an eigenvector, the direction didn't change at all, right? So only the um, scaling vector will change, right? And that will correspond to, like, this, uh, new coordinate vector will be like a scaled, like a separately, dimension-wise, right? And then the final step, final step will be to just to convert this, uh, these coordinates into the original coordinate system of using standard basis of one, zero, and zero. And how to do that? I mean, how do we do that? We just linearly combine those uh, basis vectors. I mean, the eigenvector basis by using these converted uh, coordinate values. And uh, if we just uh, combine them and then obtain the resulting vector, and then yeah, that can be viewed as the coordinate yeah, with respect to just the original standard basis of one, zero, and zero, right? <coughs> so this is the resulting one. So this and this and then yeah this point yeah so with respect to the um, eigenvector basis this was the coordinate because this guy is like this times negative two and this times yeah positive two right but this guy is actually represented as ten comma zero yeah in terms of the standard basis vector or standard basis coordinate right ah sorry negative one and zero. So you can view this kind of thing. So <laughs> when multiplying the given vector x by matrix A, so you can, of course, perform this uh, matrix multiplication directly, but this can be viewed as like three consecutive linear transformation. Or first applying this uh, P inverse, which is, uh, which is viewed as changing the coordinates with respect to eigenvector basis. And then multiplying T, which is just a separate like a diagonal scaling, I mean the 
dimension-wise scaling, which can be performed really, really fast. And then, yeah, we convert the coordinate system back to the original, like a standard basis. Okay, <coughs> and then uh, let's just uh, discuss uh, some situation where this uh, like three consecutive uh, transformation can be used really in a useful manner. So suppose we want to multiply a over and over on the um, given uh, given vector x. So we met, yeah, we consider this a to the power of k times x. And then, like uh, this, this guy, yeah, a to the power of k can be, yeah, efficient, yeah, easily represented by this because this p inverse and p will be cancelled out, right? And then, in the middle, we will yeah, we have d to the power of k, right? D to the power of k, and then, yeah, if you just uh, uh, multiply just uh, mechanically like uh, d, yeah, d times d and d times d times d and so on, and then you can easily find that. The diagonal entries will be just, uh, um, yeah, just multiplied separately, separately. Okay, and also you can think of like this uh, d to the power of k times x is actually dx and dx and dx and so on. And in that case, yeah, what is the effect of multiplying d? So that is like dimension-wise, like separate kind of scaling, right? And then that's the yeah, that's the operation or the transformation that we yeah that happens when multiplying the input with the um, input vector x. And then what about multiplying d once again? Okay, so if we multiply d, yeah, another time, and then that will also multiply or the scale yeah do the scaling on the um yeah each uh, dimension value right. So uh, still, even if we multiply d over and over, yeah, that scaling will be done separately per each dimension, right? So that way, yeah, you can also understand this uh, d to the power of k as like still maintaining the diagonal entries. Yeah, that has the, um, uh, the um, yeah, the final kind of a uh, yeah, scaling factor of lambda one to the power of k, lambda two to the power of k, and so on. And then also this, yeah, this multiplication can also be viewed as this. So yeah, if we think of this, and then it's like, yeah. So we first, yeah, we first send the uh, the vector x into a new coordinate system, and then do the um, diagonal scaling or the dimensionalized scaling, and then come back to the um, original coordinate system, right? And then uh, if you multiply a once again, and then you send it also again to the um, uh, the eigenvector basis kind of coordinate, and then diagonal scaling, and then come back, right? But in this case, yeah coming back and then sending it to the um, eigen vector space. So those two kind of a uh, process or those two operations can be canceled out, right? So that is actually the corresponding, yeah, to this, this thing, p inverse times p, right? And so, <coughs> so that way you can just send your input vector only once, yeah, all the way in the beginning, only once, and then you keep doing the um, diagonal scaling or the um, dimensionalized scaling, and then send it or come, yeah, yeah, send it back to our original coordinate system. Okay, so this is yeah, kind of an, yeah, hopefully some interesting perspective of utilizing this eigen decomposition, yeah, in an efficient manner for the um, yeah, multiplication with the matrix A over and over. Okay, so so that's it for this uh, eigen vector and eigen value thing. Okay, and then uh, in the next class we will yeah. Start with the new chapter of this uh, orthogonality and so on. So, yeah, thank you very much. So, let's see you next Tuesday.